Hi everyone, my name is Mark Sanders. I'm a solution architect at Venify. And today we're going to do a very high level description of public versus private keys. So I want to have an online bookstore. And in order to do that, I know that I need to set up a website and it needs to be secure because I'm going to take credit cards. Um, I also understand I need an SSL slash TLS certificate. I'll get one from one of the certificate authorities such as DigiCert, Intrust, or Sigtigo. Um, I will also generate a private key, a public key, and a CSR, which is certificate signing request. Um, the CSR does contain the public key, but does not contain the private key. I'm going to generate this private key. I'm never going to share it with anyone. I will never, ever share it with anyone outside of me. All right. Um, I'm then going to submit this CSR to the certificate authority I chose above. So I'm going to take this certificate sign request, send it over to DigiCert, Intrust, or Sectigo, or any of the other certificate authorities. Um, they will do some validation. They'll check that it's who I say I am. Is it really Mark? Is it really this bookstore called Mark's Online Books or that sort of thing? And then they will issue me this certificate. Um, I will then install that private key and the certificate onto my web server and I'm ready to open business and start selling books. All right, so uh, I'm now selling books and where do these keys come in? So I've got this customer, her name is Alice and she logs into my website from her laptop using the Chrome browser and she wants to buy a book. So Alice's browser, when she logs into my site, it says, hello, um, I want to buy a book or hello, this is, you know, I'm ready to do a transaction. So then my web server responds back to her and says, hello, I'm Mark's bookstore. And the way it says I'm Mark's bookstore is I give her my certificate and I also give her the public key, the, con the keys contained in the certificate. Um, note that I can share this public key with anyone. It, it's public. It's meant to go out. Anyone can you know, download it, have it. It's just available for anyone. So then when I send this over to Alice, her browser is then going to do some checking and it's going to say, is this really marksbooks.com or whatever the website name is? It's also going to look at the certificate saying, hey, this thing was issued by DigiCert. Um, is this a real certificate? Is this certificate still valid? Is this a real website? Is the site name? There's a lot of validation that goes on and her browser says, yeah, this is good. Alice, you should proceed. Or if there's something wrong, then her browser is going to go, nope, Alice, don't go there. This is not a good bookstore. All right. So then assuming she then is, is it's all good, then Alice is going to take that public key and she's going to encrypt a message. She's going to send that back to me. The only way that I can decrypt that message is if I have my private key because she took that public key that I gave her. She, she sends me an encrypted message. I will then use my private key to decrypt that message. And then once that's accomplished, because I'm the only one who has that private key, then Alice and I will open up a kind of a, another secure channel on the side. And then that's, well, it's called a session key. And then Alice and I will then be able to, she can securely buy books. Um, she can give me her credit card. She knows that everything that in that transaction is going to be encrypted. I'm who I say I am. Now, um, Alice does not have any private keys, right? Everything's been done with you know my private key and exchange of that public key. Um, sometimes you'll hear of mutual authentication, uh, meaning that I'm Mark's bookstore, but I don't know who Alice is because Alice is just some random person. I gave her my public key and that's who she is. But let's say that I want to authenticate. I only want to buy from Alice. Well, then Alice will have a private key. I will have my private key. Then we exchange the public keys and we do the message back that way. That way I understand that she's Alice, I'm Mark, and we can transact. Um, but in this case, it's only one way. So I'm the only one with the private key and it's Alice, Bob, Steve, Mary, whoever can you know, buy books on my website because I have my private key. I've given them the public key. They then encrypt that message, send it to me. If I can't decrypt it, they're going to stop talking to me. But because I decrypted it, you know, because I have the private key, then we now have the um, ability to open up that session and then communicate securely so real cap uh, real <laughs> real quick recap is that uh, i generate the public key i generate my private key i generate that csr i keep my private key i then talk to the certificate authority who issues the certificate which contains the public key i then install that certificate on my web server and then users when they want to buy something or log into my site i will send them the certificate which contains the public key 
and then they will encrypt a message, send it back to me. I decrypt using my private key, and then we know that we're good to go from that going forward. All right, um, lots of good material. If you want technical details, um, Googling, you know, TLS handshake. Um, we'll find out more information about those keys. And, you know, this is all about asymmetric encryption. I hope this was a valuable time. Thanks a lot, and uh, see you later.